Hey guys, it's Dr. May. How are you today? Well, um, I'm recording this video on June 19th, 2020, and today is the first Juneteenth day um, that's being celebrated in New York officially. So I'm off from work today and here to make a video for you. So Juneteenth is celebrating the end of slavery and the beginning of freedom for African American people. And, you know, there's obviously a lot more we have to do um, with racial equality, but you know, I want to talk today about freedom in terms of our own inner freedom, because that's an important topic in terms of our mental health and well-being. So um, let's check that out today, okay? Figured we go along with the theme and bring it back to us. All right, here we go. All right, so freedom. All right, so, so just to break it down, so freedom could be both external and internal. So external, think about you know, there's actually constraints that might be on us from where we're living, from our workplace, from our school, from society. And, you know, those are realistic constraints on our freedom. And sometimes, you know, we're trying to move toward releasing some of those external constraints. So if you're a teenager, your parents might have some external constraints on what you're allowed to do, or whether or not you could take the car, or how late you could stay out at night. If you're in the hospital, you have constraints on your freedom because you're, you might be on a locked ward. You may not be able to get out right now, or you have to ask special permission, or it could only be at a certain time, or you have to ask permission to get the bathroom open, right? So there's external constraints on your freedom. And as those are released, you know, your life might start to improve in different ways. However, no matter where you are, you may or may not feel like you have internal freedom, right? So are we really free from our internal experiences, such as our feelings, our impulses, our habits, our thoughts? Do we feel like those are ruling our life or do we feel like we could still move beyond them and make other kinds of choices, right? So that's gonna be the main focus of my talk today because that's probably what we have the most power over, okay? Sometimes we have you know, some choices that could help our external freedom, but no matter where we are, we always have some choice about the way we respond. And that's, that's our own personal freedom. Okay, so I'm going to give some examples throughout today. So these are freedom from type examples. All right, so the first one, like I was starting to say, let's say freedom from certain rules or restraints, or constraints rather. So, you know, maybe, um, you know, you may change locations or change jobs or change settings and the rules might be a little lighter for you and you might feel a greater sense of freedom, like you could have more choice in what you do and more options available to you. So that's more of an external, right? And below that, um, being controlled, bossed around or treated unfairly. So that's kind of coming from the outside too, depending on who you're around. Like you might have a really strict parent or you might have um, staff members that are working with you or bosses that are kind of strict and that's constraining your ability to do what you need to do. So that's some external things that, you know, you might be able to change in certain ways, but sometimes it's hard depending on your circumstance, right? Um, on the right though, that's a little bit more of the internal freedom I was talking about. So um, one thing we could be free from is being so concerned about what other people think of us, right? There's, I, I saw a video once on approval addiction, right? When we're so focused on getting other people to like us or to approve of what we're doing or to give us a thumbs up about, you know, whether we're doing okay or not. And we start gearing all our energies toward getting the approval from the outside rather than giving it to us on the inside. So when we're more free from what we think about other people, it gives us so much more freedom to just be ourselves, right? So that's really something we got to look at because that comes up quite a bit, right? Um, another thing is, like I started to say before, and this especially could apply if you're in DBT and you're struggling with your emotions. How do we learn how to be free from the constraints of our emotions? Are our emotions driving the bus and lead us make emotional mind decisions based on our feelings? Like if I'm angry, do I act in my anger and start hitting people or hitting people or you know, hurting myself? You know, that's not freedom, is it? Right? If the emotions are telling me what to do and I feel like I must listen, I'm not really free. The same thing with my an addiction I might have, right? If my addictive tendency is telling me, you need to pick up that drink, and I listen to it, and I feel like I have to, I don't really have personal freedom, right? 
Um, so all those things, um, you know, are important to address. So we could feel that inner peace. Because even if we're free on the outside, if we're struggling with that, we're not going to feel very free at all, right? All right, so another general freedom from I wanted to highlight in a separate slide is just a general needing, being free from needing other people or circumstances, or even yourself for that matter, to be a certain way or to be quote unquote perfect before you could feel like it's, you're okay. So you might have a very narrow range of what's acceptable to you, right? Like you might be fine if people are nice to you and respectful and if you're, things are going your way or you're getting what you need. Um, but as soon as it doesn't go your way, you might completely freak out, right? It might feel completely unokay to you and you might get really upset and emotional and start acting out in ways you're not very proud of, right? But if you're free from some of these external circumstances, which we don't always have a lot of control over, and you know that you could survive them and cope with them and be okay regardless of them happening, that's a greater sense of freedom. So there's a term in mindfulness called equanimity. Think of the word equal. So it's sort of like an equal and balanced reaction to whatever's going on in your life and not letting anything throw you for a loop. So when you're really allowing yourself to be okay with all of it, knowing that it's all part of life and it all can be learned from, that's a much greater sense of freedom because then you could deal with life as it is rather than trying to force it to be what you want. And the same thing with other people. Like if you're in a relationship, and you need somebody to behave a certain way in order for you to feel okay, and then they start deviating from that and you get all thrown off, you know, that could put a strain on the relationship too. So allowing other people to be who they are and being who you are and putting that together is a much greater uh, sense of intimacy and freedom in a relationship. Okay, so another really important one, freedom to choose, right? So while we don't always have, you know, uh, control over the externals, we do have some control over our internals. Now, you may not feel like you do, but you can definitely get better at this, okay? But I just want you to first be aware of what we do have freedom to do, because sometimes we're like a, like a dog trapped in a cage and the cage door was opened, but we're still staying in the cage. Like we don't even realize how much freedom we have to choose our responses to things, right? We still think we're trapped in our habits, but we're more free than we think. Right, so let's just be aware of that first. Okay, so first, we have the choice to think, feel, and act in a certain way based on a situation. So a certain trigger doesn't always have to lead to a certain behavior, right? I, I don't always have to act out when I'm triggered by a certain thing. I could choose a skill, or I could choose some other more positive response than what my habit was. And if I start to learn how to do that, I have much more freedom and I don't have to feel like, oh great, now this happened and now I'm screwed, <laughs> right? Um, we also have some choice about the people we spend time with. Now, you may not have 100% choice. You might be living with your family members or living on a ward with people you don't like or living in a residence with people you don't like, but you, know, you may not have to emotionally engage with them as much as you've been doing. Right, you might be able to put up more internal boundaries so that they don't get to you as much. Or you might be able to find your own little space and stay out of their business, and that gives you a little more peace. Or you might be able to find that one little quiet spot that kind of gives you more freedom from all the bombardment of other people. Um, you could also then try to find more positive people and bring them into your life and accept their invitations to hang out you know, and, and believe that you're worthy of hanging out with positive people, you know? So reaching out and seeking those kinds of people is another thing we can do. And sometimes we forget to do it because we're just stuck in our rut, right? Um, another thing is, even if we're in a, living in a restrictive circumstance, even if you're in the hospital, for example, there's still some choice you have about the activities you engage in, right? So you might be just in a sort of a routine doing certain activities that are just, eh, like maybe you just play with your phone a lot or surf the internet or, you know, watch a lot of Netflix or whatever you do. But maybe, you know, you could also choose to go outside and take a walk or, or exercise or make a healthy meal, right? Or, or to do something that makes you feel good, like pursuing a hobby that really makes you feel that great sense of vitality. Maybe something you haven't done in a while, right? So we have some choice to do those things, even if they're really simple and they don't really involve many resources. 
right? So that's a really important choice we can make that could help our, our well-being. All right, and another th side note I want to make too is that you know when we earn our freedom, and sometimes we have to be granted freedom because it's not here automatically, it's because people start to trust that we'll handle it responsibly. So freedom isn't just doing whatever the heck you want, regardless of the consequences, right? It's like if you're a teenager and your parents says, okay, you're allowed to take out the car or you're allowed to stay out till 1 a.m. It's because they trust that you're going to handle your freedom responsibly, that maybe you've started to prove yourself and now you're earning it. If you're in the hospital and you've shown that you could manage your emotions and symptoms and behaviors, you might be granted some more freedom to have privileges because the staff trust that you could handle it, right? So freedom and responsibility go hand in hand, right? So it's really about the freedom to be our best self and the freedom to make the wise mind choices that we need to make, okay? So it's not freedom doesn't equal just impulsivity and just do whatever you want regardless of everything, right? So it's a freedom to choose wisely. Okay, now, um, of course, because we're uh, a lot of you guys might be DBT people, we have to emphasize that mindfulness gives us freedom of choice. So mindfulness when, is when you're fully aware of what you're feeling, what you're thinking, what your impulses and action urges are telling you, what's going on around you. And with that awareness, you now can step back from the situation, pause the impulse, and make wise mind choices. Right? So that awareness is step one, and then the choice is next. Now, you could be aware and still make a foolish choice or a destructive choice, but you could also be aware and make a positive choice, right? So that's still something that's in your control. That's a healthy way to exercise control in your life. But mindfulness is always the first step. Mindfulness is everywhere. We got to keep on practicing. Okay, so again, we, it's really important that we use our freedom wisely. And if we don't, we often get it taken away. Even think of in society, right? If you don't use your freedom wisely, you could get arrested and thrown into jail, right? You are not just free to hurt other people or to steal from other people or to get behind a wheel when we're drunk and drive recklessly, right? Because if we do those things, we're not using our freedom responsibly and it could then be taken away from us. If we're not medicating our men or treating our mental illness properly, our freedom could be taken away from us and we could spend some time in the hospital, right? So we have to earn the right to, for, to have and maintain our freedom. So that's an important personal responsibility we need to take. And another thing is that even though we're free to choose, we're not free from the consequences of our choice, right? So for example, I'm free to stay up as late as I want, <laughs> okay? There's nobody here telling me when to go to bed. Right? If I feel like staying up till 2 a.m. watching an old movie or something, I can do it. Right? It's my prerogative. It's my house. Okay? But if I have to wake up for work the next morning, I might be really tired if I go to bed at 2, 3 in the morning. So I'm not free from the consequence of making that choice to stay up really late. Okay? That's my natural consequence, and I have to deal with that. And I can't complain about it because I made that choice. Okay? And also, I could say, well, you know, this, this freedom of speech in this world, right? I could say whatever I want. I, I live in America and have the First Amendment. I could say whatever I want. But if I mouth off and I say things that are hurtful to other people, and then they retaliate against me, I have to deal with the consequence of that, right? So I still have to exercise wise speech if I want to have, you know, a response from people that makes me feel good. Otherwise, I have to deal with the backlash from others, okay? So... No, we, we could choose, but we have to think, think ahead, you know, what would be the consequence and can I live with that? You know, and if we didn't think ahead and we still have a consequence, we still have to live with it. Tough. <laughs> That's life, right? Um, so we have to handle the consequences gracefully. Okay, so here's another concept I want us to go over to. That sometimes freedom isn't the be all and end all of everything. And sometimes it makes sense to trade some of our freedom for other benefits. Right, because there's other things in life that we might value in addition to freedom. So, for example, in society, we give up certain freedoms in order to have safety and security. Right, so there's speed limits on the highway, right, and it gives up my freedom to drive 100 miles an hour, but it, it, it prevents accidents by driving at a slower speed. 
right? Maybe 60, 65, even though the speed limit's like 55, but you know. Um, also, right now we're in the coronavirus um, and we're all supposed to wear masks and it gives up my freedom to walk around with no mask on and just go in a store and do whatever the heck I want, right? But by giving up my freedom to walk around without a mask, I'm helping to protect myself and others. And so the safety of the community is a benefit that's more important for me than just walking around without a mask, right? So see that? Um, and other times, let's say in a relationship, if you're in a committed relationship with somebody, let's say you marry somebody and you're, you're following your marriage vows, you're giving up your freedom to go around dating and sleeping around with whoever you want. However, you're gaining a life partner, someone who really loves you, someone that is loyal to you, that you're building a life with, and that might be a much more desirable benefit than the freedom to just go around and see a whole bunch of other people, right? So we have to weigh the pros and cons of how much freedom we have, because sometimes giving up a little helps us to gain something else. All right, and finally, just to end on our super general but positive note, it's important for us to exercise our freedom to be. We may have had people who telling us who we're supposed to be or how we're supposed to be or what we need to do in order to be, to be acceptable to them. And while it's all important to take in feedback from others, we, it's important that we be true to ourselves and live an authentic life and, and be true to who we are, right? And even if not everybody agrees with that, it's important for us in our own well-being. Because if we start squashing parts of who we are, we start to deteriorate and, and we lose our vitality. We start to be more depressed, anxious, withdrawn, right? But when we can express our full self, we feel so much better, all right? So we have to figure out who we are and experiment with that. But once we do, it's important to just, you know, let it roll, okay? All right, so that's um, the end of my freedom talk today. Hope that was helpful to you, and I hope, hope you get some more freedom in your life so that you feel better, okay? Thanks, guys. See you soon.